It's Amanda. This video is all about responding to sensory stimuli. So first of all, it's really important to make sure the environment is right for your child and that they're comfortable. Um, if you've got a window in the room or a television that's on, it would be best to turn the television off, any other distractions off and to turn, help your child to turn away from the window so they're not distracted by the lighting from the window. So positioning is really important for our pupils. Okay, and it would be nice to have an object of reference to start this session. So it might be that you help your child to feel the texture of the box lid. We can make sure that's like a distinctive texture so they can help to make the association. When I feel this texture on the box lid, I then do this activity. That would be really helpful. Okay, so we're going to start by singing a hello song. Hello, hello, hello to everyone. Hello, hello, hello to everyone. Everyone, oh everyone, it's nice to see you here. Everyone, oh everyone, it's nice to see you here. And now a pause. So the touch cue for a pause or stop is on the chest. Okay, so let's sing again. And I'm not going to say everyone, but you can sing your child's name in the pause. Hello, hello, hello to Hello, hello, hello to It's nice to see you here It's nice to see you here And one last time Hello, hello, hello to everyone. Hello, hello, hello to everyone. Everyone, oh everyone, it's nice to see you here. Everyone, oh everyone, it's nice to see you here. So it would be good to keep the order of the things you explore in this session the same. So you write yourself a list of the order you're going to use the resources because that will help the children to um, begin to anticipate what's coming next. So we're going to start with some lights. So it would be a good idea to um, draw the curtains, maybe turn the lights off, make the room a little bit darker. Um, I can't do that in the room I'm in now, so my lights aren't going to look as effective, but I'm sure you can make the room darker at home. Okay, so maybe one or two different light toys would be good. So the touch cue for looking is hand on shoulder. Are you ready? And then two taps beside the eye to look. Are you ready? to look and then turn the light on okay so you want to see if the child can locate the light so either move their eyes or their eyes and their head to look at it and we talk about like nine um, areas of the visual field so so the, like in the middle in the center would be one and then the middle to the right the middle to the left and then up to the center up to the left up to the right and then down to the center down to the right and down to the left so i did that really quickly then you'd need to do it much slower okay so ready to look
So it will be helpful to know how long it takes your child to move their head and their eyes to look at the light. And it would also be helpful to know, um, do they locate it best when it's not very far away from their face? Or do they locate it best when it's a distance away from them? So you could do some experimenting with that. We'd be really interested to know where your child is locating the light. And if they can do that, you might then want to move on to some tracking with the light. So you could start with the light on one side. And then you could slowly move it across, across their midline to the other side and observe do they follow it with their eyes all the way across or do they follow it to a certain point and then and then lose it okay so we'll do it with another light up toy so this one is lovely because you can um touch it's got lovely texture as well so are you ready ready hand on the shoulder ready to touch on the back of the palm are you ready Back of the hand, are you ready to touch? Okay. So for some children, um, touching and looking at the same time will be really hard. So you might be better off doing some touching and then some looking. Um, but I think it's important that they know that this object has got visual and tactile qualities. Okay. So ready to look. So you could do a similar similar thing with locating this light. So can they light, locate it in the nine visual fields, close up, far away, and what about tracking? Okay. So the light has finished. Next, we're going to do some listening. So the touch cue for listening is ready to listen. So again, I would use one or two um, sounds. Um, you could use um, musical instruments or you could use everyday objects to make sounds. Um, it will be interesting to know if your child responds best to um, quieter sounds or louder sounds or higher pitched sounds. Um, and it'll also be good to know if there are sounds they appear to like and sounds they appear to not like and how they communicate that they're liking or, or not liking something. We'd be interested to hear all about those things. Okay, so I've got a tambourine. So again, it would be nice to do ready to touch and help your child to touch the tambourine before they listen to it. Okay. And then ready to listen. Stop. So it's worth playing the tambourine for like a prolonged period of time like I did because um, some of our pupils, it takes them some time to process the stimuli they're um, receiving, the feedback they're receiving. So give them some time. Ready to listen. And stop. So again, really observe carefully what they do not only while you're, while you're playing the instrument, but also in the pause. Sometimes we see our best responses when the sound suddenly stops. And on the other side, are you ready to listen? If your child makes some vocalisations or does some actions or gestures while you're having the pause, it would be lovely for you to repeat them back. So if they say, ah, oh, you can say, ah, oh, back. It's like that you've, you've um, noticed what they've noticed as well. It's that early communication thing. 
Okay, so the tambourine has finished. So we're going to do some touching next. Um, and prior to a touching activity, a feeling activity, it's lovely to help the children to get their arms and hands ready for exploring. So in school, um, we, we follow the advice from the occupational therapist and we would press down on the child's shoulder and then squeeze all the way down their arm to the tips of their fingers and the same on the other side or you might be able to do both arms at the same time. Um, okay, and then help them to press their hands together as, um, as flat as they might go and then help them to press their hands down on a tray or on their laps again as, as flat as they can as flat as they can go and then we do a deep pressure hand massage so we go um, down each finger in turn and then like in the gaps sort of between the fingers and then we open out the palm as well and we sing a song while we do this and we use um, for most children we use scented hand cream so if you've got some hand cream or something, you can do ready to smell. So ready, hand on the shoulder, two taps for smell before you do the hand massage, okay? And we sing a song for hand massage. I've got a body, a very busy body and it goes everywhere with me. And on that body, I've got some hands and they go everywhere with me. With a massage, massage here, massage, massage there, massage, massage everywhere. I've got a body, a very busy body and it goes everywhere with me. At the side. I've got a body, a very busy body and it goes everywhere with me. And on that body I've got some hands and they go everywhere with me. With a massage, massage here, massage, massage there, massage, massage everywhere. I've got a body, a very busy body and it goes everywhere with me stop so we're ready to do some touching with our hands or feet or arms it's important to touch with lots of different parts of the body um so when we are helping um the children with particularly complex needs to touch the um an object um, it's often helpful to move the object over their hand, particularly the tips of the fingers because they're the most sensitive, to help them um, develop an understanding of the properties of this object. Um, and it may be less helpful to put their hand on the, on the object. You tend to learn more about it the other way around. Okay, so are you ready to touch? And again, observing for any reactions or responses, positive or negative. And as I said, you might want to um, help your child to feel the texture on other body parts like their arms or their feet. And I've chosen two quite contrasting textures here. So this ball is very spiky and I've got a shower scrunchie um, that's got a sort of softer 
slightly more rubbery sort of texture, so very different. You can feel with the other hand as well. Um, I haven't already mentioned, but if your child at any point indicates that they don't like what's happening, it's really important that we listen to that. So, um, so if they don't like something, stop. Um, but sometimes the pupils, their initial response to something new will be a don't like response. So it's important to try introducing it again, um, maybe a couple more times just to see um, if they get used to it. But we don't want the children to um, put up with anything they don't, they don't like. So remove it if they don't like it. So that's the spiky ball. Um, it's also helpful to label um, things to so say what things are called before we use them to help with um, the pupils understanding so I would I would consistently call this a spiky ball you can call it what you like and a shower scrunchie so we're all calling it the same thing okay shower scrunchie are you ready to touch And if your child can look at what their hands are doing while they're touching something, that's great. So for some of the pupils, they might need a bit of support at the elbow to bring their hands up to where their, um, where their eyes can look. So looking at what they're touching, while looking at what they're doing while they're touching something would be great. Okay, so touching has finished. The next thing is some smelling. So you can use the resources that we're providing or you can use anything from the kitchen or the, or the bathroom, some spices maybe or some shower gel. There's lots of different everyday smells that your child may already be familiar with. Okay, so I have like a cinnamon stick bag here. Okay, so cinnamon sticks ready to smell. Again, observing, observing any responses. So it's quite good practice to do, ev repeat every, um, every thing we're offering um, at least three times, I would see. say, so, ready to smell. So you might see stilling or you might see the flaring of the nostrils. Okay, cinnamon sticks, ready to smell. Okay, and stop. And here I've got a um, scented tea light. This is strawberry smell. So strawberry smell, ready to smell. you're looking to see is there is there a preference do they respond to the cinnamon sticks differently to how they respond to the strawberry stop strawberry smell ready to smell And if you wanted to then go back, you're not sure whether they prefer the cinnamon sticks or the strawberry smell, you could go back and try the other one again. So I'd be really interested to know which smell your child responds to best or do they respond to both of them in a similar way. So smelling has finished. Okay, and the last thing we're going to talk about today is um, to do a little bit of work on anticipation. So I've got some things um, that, that could become games. So like bubbles. So if we do ready, steady, go with bubbles and suddenly the bubbles appear, that will be really good for anticipation. I've got a vibrating toy. So ready, steady, go. And it suddenly vibrates. And I've got a scarf. So for ready, steady, go and then to suddenly hide. So these are all things to help develop your child's understanding of anticipation. So we'll start with the bubbles. So the, the sign for ready, steady, go is a hand, the, the touch cue is a squeeze on the shoulder, ready, and then at the elbow, ready, steady, 
and then let the wrist go. So three squeezes, ready, steady, go. And you can use your voice in an animated way to help build the um, excitement and anticipation. So ready, steady, go. Okay. So bubbles. Bubbles, and again, you could help them to touch your child to touch the bubbles if they want to to start with. Bubbles, bubbles, ready, steady, go. Bubbles. So, as I said, probably repeat three times unless your child is telling you, No, I don't want bubbles anymore. You could consider where the bubbles are popping. So bubbles popping in your child's face may not be a very nice experience for them. Bubbles popping on their fingers might be quite nice. Experiment with, with how they respond best, what they like. Bubbles, ready, steady, go! Okay, so third time for bubbles. Okay, vibrating toy. Okay, vibrating toy. So you could first of all do maybe, are you ready to touch? And again, stop. And again, um, fingers, um, feet, arms, you could use the vibrating toy on different body parts. So vibrating toy, ready. Steady, go! And stop. So nice long pause again. Vibrating toy, ready, steady, go! Vibrating toy, ready, steady, go! And stop. And the last thing we're going to use is the scarf, okay, for hiding. And we sing a someone's hiding song. So we would like the child to know or to begin to understand that when you play with a scarf and sing the scarf song, that means it's the, it's the end and this session's finished. Okay, so scarf again, ready to touch. You can feel the scarf to help you understand what's about to happen. Hiding, hiding, ready, steady, go! Someone's hiding, someone's hiding. Can we find them? Can we find them? It's you. If they don't like their um, being hidden completely, you could hold the scarf in front of them. You could hide with them underneath the scarf or you could hide a body part. There are lots of different options there. Can your child, um, do they move at all to try, and, uh, to try and remove the scarf? You could put it on, on their head just very lightly so they have to just do a tiny movement to, to free the scarf out of the way or they might move an arm or something. Okay, scarf hiding, ready, steady, go! Someone's hiding, someone's hiding. Can we find them? Can we find them? It's you! Last time. Hiding. Ready, steady, go! Someone's hiding, someone's hiding. Can we find them? Can we find them? It's you. So it would 
would be nice at the end of the session for you to tell your child what they've done well. Um, and the touch cue for well done is two presses down on their shoulder. Well done. So please um, email me or contact your child's class teacher if you would like any further input regarding this session. And we're looking forward to hearing about how you get on with it. Thank you. Bye-bye.